So fall in love with being a man of integrity. Fall in love with being a man that takes care of his children. And fall in love with being a man that works every day to be the best reflection of God that you can be. And as you do that and you go on your healing journey, you will meet other amazing people who are also on their healing journey. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Rich in Real Life. And today's guest you are not ready for. I am joined today by Dr. Della Toro McNeil II, recently inducted into the National Speakers Association Speakers Hall of Fame. He is one of the top 1% of paid professional speakers. He's considered a peak performance expert. He is USA Today and Wall Street Journal's best-selling author. Because we didn't realize that in order to change the mate, you got to first change the Here's what I firmly believe, Jess. We don't want everybody's I love you. People say cheating is what kills every relationship. You know what I believe really kills a lot of relationships? A lot of What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Rich in Real Life. I'm your host, Jessica Hurley, and I am here with a guest, y'all, that I'm going to real quick run through his accolades that literally make him a man of many things. But then I'm going to tell you what the episode is actually about. Dr. Della Toro McNeil II was recently inducted into the National Speakers Association Speakers Hall of Fame. He is one of the top 1% of paid professional speakers. He's considered a peak performance expert. He is USA Today and Wall Street Journal's considered a best-selling author. He spoke in 49 of 50 states, come on y'all, worked with companies that you may know a little bit about, companies like Johnson & Johnson, Boeing, New York Life, just to name a few. He is the founder of the Full Throttle Experience Conference. He is an author of eight books, eight books. And he's a dad of two <laughs> teenage girls. Yes, absolutely. But all of that <laughs> literally has nothing to do with this episode. <laughs> this incredible episode, buckle up your seatbelt, get Oof. out your notebook and probably get ready to get on your knees yeah. because we talk about men yeah. healing with integrity. Yeah. We talk about heartbreak. That's we talk right. about dealing with our triggers. Yep. We talk about what it's like to be in the battlefield of after you get out of the situation, what does it look like to date? What does it look like to understand when what healing with speed yes, means? Yes. How to find those experiences that you need that are outside of journaling, meditation, and all the things they tell you to do when you're healing, right. but the things that will actually heal you. There's an actual how in this episode, which yes. I think is critical for both men and women. Yeah. And the mirror that we have to face when we are praying and looking for the person that we want that we think is going to be our better half, hmm. but we may or may not be there yet for the person that we expect. That's right. We are not that person yet. Yeah. And so I think this vulnerable, transparent episode is critical for your listening hour. Y'all dive in, stay tuned, and welcome to the show, Dr. De Della Toro McNeil. Woohoo! <laughs> welcome to the show. Honor indeed. Thanks so much. We're going to have a blast. Woo! That, that we will. Let's get it. <laughs> Guys, I saw Dr. Della Toro on, you've been, I mean, you are a paid speaker. You have been all across the globe. You are a peak performance expert. We will get into all of that in a moment. Sure. But I saw you on this episode Dear of Dear Future, Future Wifey, <laughs> y'all. And what's the, this is how bad it is. I can't remember the host's name. What's his name? Lateris Whitfield. Lateris Whitfield. Uh, incredible host. But all I can think of is Dear Future Wifey, that podcast. <laughs> and I saw your episode and I was like... <laughs> I was hollering. I was like, oh my God. I was on vacation. You was texting me. I was like, yes, yeah, she's loving it. <laughs> I was like, what I text you? I said, you better cut it you out. Better cut it. I'm about to throw everything I got across the room <laughs> I'm about at you. To throw everything. <laughs> But let, let's before we get into it, let's be let me just be transparent for a moment that why I thought what you were talking about was so cool on this episode and so necessary. Yeah. Because here on Rich in Real Life. You guys, if you have been listening for a long time or a short time or most recently, you have been bared witness to my very vulnerable, honest journey of healing, of the need for a lot of us women to heal, for the vulnerability and transparency of mid-30s and dating and yeah. understanding who you are and how you operate in the world and the lens in which you've created that makes you make the decisions that you make. And, you know, we have to take a lot of responsibility for that. And on this podcast, we have we've talked about the hows we've talked about you know owning taking radical responsibility self-responsibility all the things 
But we don't talk about what men experience because in order for you to experience heartbreak and healing and all the things, there has to be a human on the other yeah, side of that. That's right, that's right. We don't talk about the opposite sex because we can't, yeah. because we can't speak from a place that we have not experienced. That's right, right? That's right, absolutely. And so I thought it was just so cool that you were speaking to one, your experience of a heartbreak, yeah. but the journey that was healing, and I want to start here, you talked significantly about what you call healing with integrity. Yes. So Jess, I'm so pumped about this conversation of mm -hmm. healing with integrity because it's something that God literally gave me when, so Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant actually introduced Lateris and I um, in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I was in town for a Dr. Bernice King's birthday celebration. Okay. And so we it had- It was an Atlanta party. Yeah, you know it was, okay? <laughs> I mean, who's who, it was amazing. Yep. But um, I, I, I had just remixed a reel that Lateris had done about- Oh, because um, his content is good. It's ridiculous, yep. right? And so I had just remixed one of his reels. Had no clue I was going to meet this brother because I right. didn't really, really even know much about his podcast until I saw the reel, remixed it because I was going through heartbreak at the time. Had no clue I was going to meet the brother literally a month later. Mm. So I'm in Atlanta at an event, et cetera, et cetera. While I was in Atlanta, of course, I spent some time with my brother, Dr. Jamal Bryant. And he said, hey, listen, Lateris is actually going to be- right here at our church doing a podcast live live right so he's like hey cool i can introduce you to him tomorrow come to our singles brunch mm -hmm. blah blah so i went to service went to the singles brunch right afterwards and lit when i tell you he sat right across the table from me and he started sharing his story of a recent heartbreak he had gone yeah. through which was the exact same that i had gone through mm -hmm. and and me he and dr bryant just started this three-way kind of dialogue about there's not a lot of conversation about how when the man because there's so much talk about Men are irresponsible. Men don't have their act together. They don't have their this. What about the men that do have their stuff together? Right. But it's right. the woman that's emotionally unavailable. So we ended up doing a whole show on that. And man, it it went viral. It, it just it just. And so I, I love Dear Future Wifey. I love Lateris. And I'm so grateful that it opened up the door to have a global conversation about healing. Mm -hmm. And so the term healing with integrity came from that place. So as a result of the episode, just true story, I literally created a free online course for people to be able to start to really begin to heal with integrity. They get like six videos, they're like 40 minutes each. I mean, it's it's just, and then they can go to healingwithintegrity.com to get it. It's mm -hmm. absolutely free. And wow. I did that as a, as a direct follow-up from that show because right. I want to help create more healing. Because I just, Jess, I feel like we don't, heal well no i mean there, there there's so, so much trauma because we're not healing well so we're gonna drop that stat right now because yeah, you dropped yeah, it on that show yeah, and yeah. you said your therapist said 95 percent of people do not heal between relationships i'm gonna say that again slower 95 percent of us are not healing well between relationships so what happens is we go through a relationship it's traumatic we go through the breakup mm -hmm. there's all this baggage from that relationship then what we tend to do to to um, numb the pain, mm -hmm. I did this, was we go right into another relationship, not realizing that we're dating the same person over and over again. They just change faces and names because we didn't realize that in order to change the mate, you got to first change the bait. <laughs> I'm going to say that again slower. <laughs> you saw my face. I was like, you better say that again. <laughs> We, if, if you've dated the same person over and over again and they just change faces and names, it's because you haven't realized that in order to change the mate, you have to first change the bait. Meaning we have to change how we're hooking people. What, 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 if, you, if you fish with bass bait, you're going to constantly catch bass or grouper, right? Or trout, right? So you got to change the bait that you're, and in order to change the bait, you got to heal. Can I tell you what I heard when you said Please. that? This is what I heard. I heard you cannot play victim to the things that you attract. Yeah. That you part. cannot play victim to the things that you attract because right. the reality is we are the reason. That's right. The, for everything that we attract, good and different that's and right. bad. That's right. And so that's why we have to look in the mirror. That's right. And we have to we have to do the work internally mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. People ask me all the time, are you a relationship expert? I said, no. No. But I do know a little bit about healing. Right. Because I've had to heal through all kinds of stuff. And as a result of that show, people were like, man, you talked about NLP, you talked about psychology. You talk I, I had therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, which tend to come to my brand the most. It's amazing. Right. I, my brand attracts e extremely intelligent people. Right. And that's because you attract what you are. Right. A. So yes. let's start there. You attract what you are. B, B. What said, parts of you right. are attracting those type of people? Good, bad, and go. indifferent. There you go. Yep, go ahead. And, and, and they, 
these therapists would say, thank you for shining a light on the importance and the value of mental health, right. the importance and the value of therapy, the importance and the value of healing. Whatever modality you pick, great, mm -hmm. but go on your healing journey, but do it with integrity. And the reason why I say do it with integrity is because we live in a world that just says, get a passport, be a passport, bro, boom, you're good. Or, or, <laughs> get, or get over somebody by getting under somebody else, right? You know, I mean, we've heard it, right? <laughs> Glazed over that passport, bros. You passport, just get hoes. Passport, you know bro, and just move on. <laughs> Boom, right. <laughs> but that's the world we live in, yes. right? It's 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 just, and and if we're not careful, we will literally we're damaging people because we're not healing. So you're bringing all that baggage that didn't work with Michelle, and you're putting that on Sarah. And then what didn't work with Sarah, you're not putting Michelle, Sarah, on Elizabeth. And when the, Elizabeth run girl, right. You said, <laughs> it's like, and, and, and you could, you could change out the names and the yeah. genders all day yeah. long, but if we're not healing, we're never growing no. and we're certainly not evolving. No, all we're doing is recycling pain. Therefore we're not changing who we're attracting. And recycling trauma. Yep. Yeah. When I went through, I've told this story before, but when I went through, um, my biggest breakup, I had two high performance coaches at the time. Mm. And I immediately that week called both of them and I was like, Hey, here's all the things I'm going through. I got to let you go. Mm. And what, I just remember one of them was like, I don't think that's a good idea right now. Right. Like you need someone solid to help you make decisions. And yeah. I was like, I don't think that you understand that I understand. I don't think you understand that I now understand how important it is right now yeah. that I'm willing to fire every high performance coach I have and hire a basketball team of healers that part. for the very reason that I'm so broken right now that one, I have to figure out where this is coming from, what yes. this is rooted in. Yes. And two, six years down the line, I can't end up in the same position with another man That's in a right. different, with the same man in a different body. Come on. Come so on. So I need to figure out where this came from. Exactly. I'm so beat down right now. I can't even function. Come on. So I need to figure out where the <laughs> breakdown is here. Exactly. And you, what you're going to do is your job. That's right. But I know I don't need your job right now because your job is to push me through my mess so that I can get to those numbers. Right. I don't want those numbers right now. They'll That's be right. there when I get back. That's right. That's but I right. need to figure this out right yes. now. Yes. And you and you healed with integrity. And that's what it's about. It's about pausing from all the stuff that you think you're supposed to do mm -hmm. to to watch this. Make love to yourself. And I've never said that on a show before, but I'm saying <laughs> it right now. Talk about, I mean, I believe self-care is not selfish. And I'm not talking about masturbation. I'm right. talking about Make love to you. Here's what I mean by that. When was the last time you wrote yourself a love letter? Oh, I do that. When was the last time I you... do that? Come on now. See, I do see, that. Yes. Last I was time screaming in the car on the way here. I was like, just go girl, your life is so good. Yes. Your life is so good. Right. What what does Mel Robbins say? Give yourself a high five, five in the yep. mirror. Come yes. on, right? It's that same notion. It, you know, buy yourself an outfit, right? Yes. So I'm I'm the kind of dude where I will I'll run a tub for my queen. I will I'll I'll, I'll bathe her. I mean, I'm so when when I when I'm not in a relationship, guess what I do? I run my own bathtub for my dadgum self. Right. I, I like candles for my dadgum self. Everything I would want I, a partner for to give to them, give you. it to myself I right give, now. I give yes. myself the trips. I give myself the massages. I give myself the pampering. I take care of me because if we don't take care of ourselves, guess what? We can't be anything for any anybody else. Mm -mm. Literally, it's like it's like people people don't understand Jessica that if 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 you don't put it, it, we hear this all the time on planes, put the oxygen mask on yourself first right. before you help somebody else. Yep. But here's the part that we ignore. The second thing that they say after that is, even though the bag may not inflate, ah, trust Faith. that <laughs> oxygen is still flowing. <laughs> I can, I'm going to leave. I'm about to get up out of this chair. <laughs> so even though we can't see in the natural, because sometimes the wait, what I have chill bumps all over me. Sometimes what prevents us just from healing is that we swear that the work is not being done. Yeah. It's happening. You don't, you can't see it, Yeah, but it's happening on the yeah. inside. Yes. When you go to the therapy, when you go to your yoga, when you go to your gym, when you, when you journal effectively, when you stay around good people mm -hmm. and, and, and you watch the movies that make you cry because that yes. was the, a movie you saw with your partner and you learned to enjoy that movie by your dad gum self. Right. Right. Without somebody else's Without reaction. Without trigger yeah. attached to it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, that's, that's the internal deep down work. Oxygen is flowing. The bag ain't inflating. You ain't got a boo yet necessarily. Right. But trust that God is still doing something powerful in your life when you heal with integrity. Okay. I got two things here, but this is so good. If you're not on the floor yet or you ain't got a pen and paper, I don't know what to tell you. Turn. Oh, wrong episode. It's only going to get worse. It's, it's only going to get worse. Okay. So I got two things. So I just heard what you said and you were like, you know, you, you feel like it's not working. 
but you're like, you know, you start to realize that things are working. And right. This, this reminded me of something that I heard. Um, was it was it Mel Robbins? No, it was um, Glennon Doyle said this. Mm -hmm. And I heard it at the beginning of my healing journey and it made no sense. And then when I got to the other side, which I want to talk about healed with the ED in a minute. Mm -hmm. But when I got to the other side, I realized how real it was. And one of the biggest signs that I knew the work was working mm -hmm. was that from her quote, she said, you know, as humans, we are, there's forgive and forget, forgive and forget. You got to yeah. forgive and forget. Yeah. But we are masterpiece. Like we are pros at forgiving. Mm. We're literally forgiving machines. Like mm -hmm. we do it all the time. We forgive our parents and our kids and our coworkers. Like it's, it's a very natural thing. Mm -hmm. But the barrier is that we forgive and we don't forget. Come on. And we struggle to forget because when we choose to forget, we, we're, we're basically saying these memories that I have with you no longer matter. Mm. And I'm willing to just kind of forgive, like forego them. They right, can go. Right, 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 right. And then that's like, like you said, yes, watching a movie and exactly. not having the emotion that's attached right, that's to right, it. That's right, exactly. I realized the work was working when I started to, and I'm not, it was like a, it wasn't even a choice to forget. I just started to forget like the, it started to just not have yeah. the same impact and yeah. effect on me anymore. Right. The triggers kind of started to lift a that's little right. bit. That's and right. I was like, Oh, mm -hmm. because there was a time when I was like, I'll never forget. Right, like, right, 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 right. I'm all you know? this, right. Yeah, this yeah. is going to live in me forever. <laughs> right. But it started to lift and I was yeah. like, oh, this is so beautiful. And right. that's when the work started to, we right, we compile. Come on. That's right. right? Things that's start right. to compile. Yeah. However, we are not about to sit on here. At least I'm not. You can. I'm not going to sit up here and say that I have ever felt like I have been completely healed yeah. with an ED. Yeah. You know, and you said that's why we heal with integrity. And immediately I thought, you mentioned all the things. I have done all the things. You yeah. have done all the things. Yeah. I have gone on this podcast and told y'all I have done Reiki, somatic breath work, yes. EMDR, uh, hypnosis. I have done all the things. But there are plenty of times, more so this than the other, that I have thought, I'm doing a lot of stuff. And there are times when it don't feel better. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you talk about this. Yes. Healing with speed. Yes. Oh, see, you, you, but okay. Ah! <laughs> you about to get ridiculous. Okay, so watch this. So, two things. First of all, you talked about how we're. I want y'all to know that this is where the how is about to come in. Sorry. <laughs> so, so, so you talked about how we're forgiving machines. Yeah. But here's the issue that I have with that, Jessica. We forgive everybody but ourselves. <laughs> We're great at forgiving the parents. Oh, they just didn't know better, blah, blah, blah. We forgive the kids. We forgive right. the significant other spouse, boo, or it's complicated. The person we struggle with forgiving is ourselves. Right. We don't, so we have to start with us. And so one exercise I want to give everyone right now mm. is I want, you, I want you to get a pen and piece of paper out and I want you to write a I forgive you letter to you. Mm -hmm. Say, you know, I forgive you mm -hmm. for that mistake, for that choice, for enjoying that toxic relationship for I, too I long. forgive myself for allowing every red flag to feel like home. Go ahead. Come on. Right, right. <laughs> air, air one of them. Air one of them. That was just the, you know, that was the, hey, the, those red flags, you know, paved. Lined up. Right, lined up. <laughs> what? That was the runway for me to take off. Child, are you kidding me? What? And I was whipped. Okay. <laughs> red flag and whipped. I'm good. <laughs> but no, you, I mean, so, so we have to, healing with, part of healing with integrity is realizing that we have to forgive ourselves mm -hmm. for the mistakes that we made. We have to forgive ourselves for the choices that we made. Mm -hmm. We got to forgive ourselves for the path that we took. We got to forgive ourselves for, for saying, listen, there's nothing wrong with wanting the relationship. There's something wrong with wanting a relationship more than you wanting love that's authentic. See, here's what I believe. Wait, y'all notice when he say, see, I'm like something about to come out. Right. <laughs> it's about to get good. Here's what I firmly believe, Jess. We don't want everybody's I love you. No. But most of us, watch this. But we want to be loved so bad. So bad. We want to be loved so bad. See, so, and because we want to be loved so bad, we just accept, we can't, we're so hungry. We have such a craving for just, just, I want someone to love me. So bad. That that love can be toxic. That love can be gaslit based. That love can be based in, in narcissism. That love can be based in, in control. That love can be based in all, toxicity. But as long as I love you, I'm good. So what I've learned to do is, is was, I said, listen, before you even tell me that you love me, what does your love contain? What's in the container of the love that you have for me? Because if that love's got knives and machetes and guns, and I don't want that love. You don't want everyone's love. You want authentic love. You want 
agape love. You want philios love. You want eros love. The three different forms of love. Eros is erotic love. Mm. Philios is the love of a friend. And agape is the love of God. You want those three types of love. You want a godly love for someone. You want a romantic, erotic love for someone. And you want them to love you like a friend because every amazing relationship should start off with a foundation of friendship because you're not always going to feel in love. Right. One of my greatest mentors, his name is Dr. Willie Jolly. He and his wife, Dee, are my spiritual parents. They're in Washington, D.C., and they have been married for 35 years, have not had an argument in the last 32 of those 35 years. But the first couple of years was rocky. And so they came to me. They said, listen, we want to write a marriage book um, and we're going to call it 10 Ways to Shape a Great Marriage. And they was like, that's the title. I'm like, that's the title? They was like, yeah. I said, give me 24 hours. Pause. Yep. I'm going to give you a better title for your book. Footnote to every author that's out there. A title captures attention. A subtitle explains. Right. So what they had done is they had written a great subtitle. Right. But they didn't ten have Ten ways a, to, yep. Yeah. Ten, ten ways to shape a great marriage is a subtitle. Right. So I'm like, great. We got the subtitle. Now we need the catcher. We need the right. clincher. So I spent 24 hours thinking about their relationship and I came back and I called him. I said, hey, doc, I got the title for your marriage book. He said, what is it? I said, is Mama D there? He said, yes. Yeah. Put her on speaker. She gets on speakerphone. I said, the name of y'all's book is Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last. Mm. <laughs> Come what on, somebody. Everybody wants. What everybody, everybody wants. wants. Yep. Make love, yep. make money, make that thing last. Right. And, and so now I have chill bumps all over me. So now when I see them interviewed all over the world, they've been on the Today Show, mm. they've been on all these major networks. And when I see their YouTube and I see them, I see the book cover, I'm inspired by that because I'm like, man, that's going to be me one day. It is. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm saying? But we got to go on our healing journey with integrity in order to do that. Mm. Okay. Because watch this. Watch this, Jess. Here's where it gets funky, right? We want the love. Mm -hmm. We want the companionship. We want the partnership. We want all the stuff we see on Instagram. But the truth is, the you can't get any of that until you heal correctly. Now, we have been taught that healing correctly means you go to your yoga classes. I was like, somebody's take, sitting on this. Somebody's listening to this episode <clears throat> right now. And they're like, okay, healing, 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 healing. But you're telling me if I go outside with a notebook and I go to a yoga class nah, nah. and I meditate <laughs> and I listen to music and I don't date anyone and I don't get up under anyone, right. that's my healing journey. Yeah, no. And you're saying it's not. No, no. Talk to them, please. So I'm a, this so, is so, never defined. Right. <laughs> So we're about to get into something that's real funky, and this okay. is a metaphor based. So uh, my eighth book is called Shift Into a Higher Gear, Better Your mm -hmm. Best, Live Life to the Fullest. Book number eight. So excited. God's been amazing. It's a Wall Street Journal, USA Today bestseller, documented Talk your bestseller. Noise. Love it. So free. <laughs> Y'all, the Today Show had us on their show five times wow. in the same year for the Congrats. same book. I'm one of the only authors that that's ever happened for. So that's okay. a big deal. One of the things that I, so I've been riding motorcycles for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I love about motorcycle riding that you have to understand is that when you're on a motorcycle, motorcycles are extremely different from automobiles. Cars are cool. Motorcycles are way cooler because they teach you so many lessons about life and business. Yep. Here's one of them. And this is where speed comes in. We think that healing means going to therapy, which is important, mm -hmm. doing the yoga and the meditation, which is important, journaling, mm -hmm. which is important, staying around good people. All that's important. But the truth is the thing that's going to heal you the fastest is speed. Well, you say, well, Dr. Del Toro, why is that important? On a motorcycle, when you want to change directions, you don't mm -hmm. have to turn a steering wheel like you do in a car. Mm -mm. All you have to do is lean in the direction you want to go because mm -hmm. the motorcycle is taking 100% of its direction. Right from your intention and a motorcycle knows your intention right based upon where you put your weight mm. ah! now the nanosecond you lean to the left or the right that's on a motorcycle that's the direction you're going yep. a and b gravity starts to work against you right it's the only thing that keeps a motorcycle upright is speed is speed so when you're in the curves of life and you're in the trenches of life and business and love and relationships, and you're in these curves, most of us think, oh, let me stop doing all this stuff. Right. But that's the exact opposite of what you should do. You actually need to roll the throttle because speed is your friend. The only thing that keeps a motorcycle upright when you're in a curve is speed. Well, Dr. Del Toro, what is speed? I'm so glad you asked. Because um, I'm listening to this and I'm like, speed is exactly what they tell you not to do. Stop flying through life. Right. Slow everything down. Halt all activities. Right, right. And sit in solitude. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, and I've had the friends and I've been the friend where I'm like, 
Okay. Right, right, so, right. So now what? <laughs> so, so, so I want you to do those things because you do need the solitude yes. to, to reflect, to figure out what worked, what didn't work, to write the letters, to journal, to cry right. and all that. But once you're done with that, realize that you still got to roll the throttle. You still need speed. Yeah. Why? Because that's the only thing that keeps the bike up right. What does speed mean? Speed stands for a significant reparative emotional experience demonstrated. Oh, we love an acronym. <laughs> I'm say it again slower. Speed is a significant reparative emotional experience demonstrated. Here's what that means. Let's talk business for two seconds. Right. Let's say you have a business partner right. and y'all did great stuff together. Y'all had a business for 10 years. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden they start smuggling money out of the company, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the business partnership goes south. You do all your meditation, all your healing, et cetera, et cetera. And then guess what? You take on a new business partner five years from now. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden that new business partner as soon as y'all start to commingle business funds and accounts, et cetera, et cetera, all those same fears from the previous business partner are going to rise up again until that new partner shows you that they know how to manage the money, manage the accounts with integrity. Right. Now, all of a sudden, that new significant reparative emotional experience demonstrated is what really heals you. It's not, it's not the time. It's a better business partner. So watch this. In relationships, it's not taking three years away from a narcissistic person that heals you. Right. It's getting around someone who values your character and your integrity, who doesn't pay for your dinner and then expect booty as a direct result of it. Come on, somebody, right? Hello, right? See, I'm just being honest, right? Someone who, who actually was raised well, someone who actually believes in chivalry, opening up car doors and opening up restaurant doors and opening up your chair and man facing the, the, the door of a restaurant so that you never have to worry about anything ever happening to you. He knows what's coming to the table before anything ever happens at the table, right? A man who knows how to turn on the alarm at night and ch check all the doors. A better, a, a better experience is what really heals us, not just time. Because our brains are wired to go back to the most recent requisite stimulus. <laughs> That's why something can happen to you 10 years ago. And someone can do something today that slightly reminds you of it. And that trigger sets you off as if you hadn't done all the work you've done from the last 10 years. So instead of us focusing on solitude and isolation and going to Sedona and sitting on a rock for for a year. And I love Sedona. I just came back from Sedona. Right. I love it. There's nothing wrong with those things. Not but, sitting on a rock. <laughs> come on. But what heals you is a better experience. And so we have to go after the better experience. But watch this. You can't go after a better relationship experience if you don't know what the heck you're going after. I, I'm, I'm away. I can't reach you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Right. So, 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 so have you taken the time to really define not just what you want in a relationship, but who you want in a relationship and who you're willing to become to get it? Because to you got to stop. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. There's too much going on right now. I'm like, wait, wait. Back up. Because I'm listening to this. I'm like, okay. There were so many times I was like, what? Stop. Okay. So just hold take, on. Just take, just take the shoe off. I'm just, just kicking you with it. Um, okay. So someone heard this and thought, I heard this and thought, so I remember people saying stuff to me like this and it was like, well, well, okay, well, how do I find out what I want? I'll just make a list, right? Mm, yeah. The list was a lie. Mm. The list was a lie. There you go. Because I had never experienced all the things that I wanted to experience. Mm. So I was just making up ideal stuff. It's the equivalent of like when they're like, what's your financial goal for your business? What does everyone say? What they've heard on the internet? Over a million dollars. Right, right, I right. want to hit seven figures. Right. And then they're like, great. What are you going to do with that? And you're like. I don't know, uh, just right. hit a million dollars. Right. Until that's right. you know where that money is going to go is when God is going to give it to that's you. That's right, that's right. The equivalent of until you know the experience you want with a partner, that's right. then you will be granted what that is and clarity around what that is. And, and you the, just, and you just said something powerful. There's a difference between a companion and a partner. Mm. See, that's, let's, just, let's just stop right there. There is a massive difference between a companion and a partner. Let's just be honest. You can get anybody... Let me, I'm, can I help you save a lot of time and energy and heartbreak? Please. Anybody can go to the movies with you. Oh. Anybody can go on a cruise with you. Any Anybody can, can go to a restaurant with you. Companionship is easy. You can get a dog and you got companionship. I think all of us need to move from seeking companionship to seeking partnership. That's why I love what LaTerris Whitmill talks about on Dear Future Wife. He says, I want a purpose partner. Someone who is in this thing called life on their assignment, I'm on my assignment, and we're purpose partners together. Because here's here's 
People say cheating is what kills every relationship. You know what I believe really kills a lot of relationships? A lack of vision for the relationship. Mm. A single person knows what they want. Another single person knows what they want. So these two single people both are going after what they want, but they didn't make the vision of what the relationship was going to be bigger than their own individual visions. So as they're in relationship, they're pursuing separate visions. That's division. I'll wait. So at the end of the day, every couple that I know that's killing it, kicking butt and taking names and they're authentically happy, the vision that they have for their marriage is bigger than the individual vision of any individual person in the relationship. There's so much going through my <laughs> mind right now. <laughs> Cause I'm like, that's so ridiculously clear to me because I'm like, do you know how many times that I've been in like, in what it feels like a marriage and a partnership in yeah. a vision with someone when there is an, um, a communicated goal between the two of us, whether it's me and my client, yes. whether it's me and a business partner. Yes. Yes. I used to do women's events with my best friend and our goal, we never, like, hardly ever, we had one person that talked about the money to us, but we hardly ever talked about the money. Yeah. It was how many people, we like the vision, the vision was right. always at the center of how are we talking to these people? How are we impacting them? How are we okay. I integrating our experiences right. into this experience that we give everyone else? Like it was always the vision. The vision yeah. can keep everything clear Come when on. you have the same vision. Come on, that's it. That's and I'm it. sitting there like, do you know how many relate? Like literally in my mind, I'm like, fold, that part, fold. Because right. you know how many relationships I've been in where it was like, well, you do your thing and I'll do mine. That's right. That's right. Exactly. And then we come to the table wondering like, well, what happened? Because here, <laughs> here's, here's the thing that nobody teaches you about relationships. Relationships in and of themselves are bankrupt. There is nothing in a relationship except what two people put in it. So at, at Jump Street, a relationship has nothing in it. It's a container. And it's your job to bring things to the relationship. Here's the problem with the list culture that we were trained in. The list culture says, I'm making a list of all the things I want someone else to be. What we have to learn how to do is make a list and then say, okay, am I in alignment with what it's going to take to attract this type of an individual into my life? And if I'm not in alignment with that, I'm not going to get that person because that person is healed. And a healed person is going to see through my BS. Right. A healed person is going to see through my 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 imposter syndrome, my needing to be needed, my my childhood wounds, my dad wounds, my this, my that. The, a, a healed person will see that you're love bombing me. If you give me a hundred gifts and we just met. Right. A healed person says, "Okay, that's love bombing. Let's see how that lasts for three months." See, I don't do I don't I don't do representatives. That takes too much energy. I am who I am. Right. And that's why I love your show. Right. Rich in real life. Real life. What does what the real life mm -hmm. look like? I don't have to look over my shoulder. No. For anything. Mm -mm. For anyone. Mm -mm. I've built my speaking business on integrity. I turn down gigs that are not in my wheelhouse, even though I make incredible money per per talk. I will turn a gig down in a nanosecond if it's not. If, if, if a major client calls me and says, hey, come teach on customer service. That's not what I talk about. So yeah, and have you ever got that feeling in your gut where you're like, I just can't do this? Yes. And like six months later, you're like, oh, that's why I didn't do yeah, that. Exactly. And I'm glad I trusted me. And, 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 and trust the doors that God closes. Yes. Man, when I tell you there are so many times I've wanted things and wanted people that God didn't want for me. Hollering at God. <laughs> why did you take that thing away from me? I wanted you. it so bad. He prayed. So we have to learn how to sometimes pray down a brick wall. Especially mm. us as high achievers, because we are trained to plow through everything. Yeah. So if it's difficult, Numbers. great. No, yes. Oh, let's go through yes. it. I got this. You can't do it. Watch, yeah. oh, Watch me. Watch what? this. And so, and, and and then we take on people. And I did this for a long time. I want to warn every high achiever who is a big giver. If you have a big heart, if you are an empath, and if you are a high achiever, please pay attention. When you are a big giver and you have a massive heart, the problem is you will automatically attract takers. You will automatically attract takers. And no one taught us this. We were not taught that. See, even, even my mom, my mom passed away 10 years, ago, 10 years ago. My mom was an amazing woman. I love her. I talk about her in every speech. My mom taught me and my brother how to treat a woman like royalty. Mm. The only thing my mom didn't get a chance to teach me was the games that women play. Oh, so I grew up knowing how to treat a woman amazing, knowing how to be a great giver, knowing how to take care of a single woman because I was raised by a single mom. Right. So I knew how to take care of. I didn't know how to see when I was being taken advantage of. Okay, hold on. So <laughs> I promise I'm team us. I'm, I'm team us, ladies. I really am. 
But talk what talk about what games do women play? Oh my god. And I mean this gosh, sincerely. I'm talk- because I've caught myself in the game. Yes. I'm, like I'm, girl, I'm, you're just right now, if you don't fix this, you're just an evolved version of what you've been through. Exactly. You need to get up. That part. What are you doing? I mean, think about it. I mean, I, I, I I've experienced this for myself in, in, in relationships where I've was in a relationship with a woman who her father was not in her life mm-hmm. or she had poor male representation in her life, mm-hmm. which might not have been her fault, but there's games that come as a result of that. Right. For example, if, if, if she has not done her healing work and her father was not in her life or her ex did her wrong, et cetera, et cetera, whoever the new present male is will pay the price for what the father didn't do and what the ex didn't do. I, and I then just, we cover that. Watch this. And then we cover that up with good booty, good sex, good head, good whatever you want to call it. B- big bank accounts. So, so, so I know, I, I know, I because I've done it. I, I've, 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 I've dated the Instagram frame, right? The glaze big, over, glaze over the stale donut. All that, right? Because <laughs> that's what we do, y'all. I mean, if if we're not careful, we'll put glaze on stale donuts because we're we're constantly we're going after the image. Yeah. Right. You the look big booty, perfect. the big this, the big that. So we go after all the stuff and not realizing that. OK. And she knows that she's got it going on in that regard. Right. But she uses that to mask. Internal drama. Mm. Narcissism. Un- have, have you healed from that abortion? Mm. Have you healed from that miscarriage before you started trying to start creating a family with somebody else? Have you healed from that? If not, all you're doing is and, and watch this. And we show up great on social media. I, we were talking about this before the show. If we're not careful, we will see as high achievers, y'all, we got to be careful. There's two high achievers love to focus on things that move the needle and, and things we can quantify. So we focus on two things. You'll notice this on social media. We focus on our weight, how great we look, and we focus on how much money we make. Mm-hmm. Why? Because those are the two things that are measurable. Mm-hmm. You can measure them with numbers. Yep. But the reason why we run from healing from emotions, from love, from commitment, from dedication, from long suffering, patience, all the stuff it takes to make a relationship work is because you can't quantify that with a number. So I can I can trick you all day long on social by showing you how amazing my body is. Yeah. But what about my integrity? What about my character? What about is my word good? Do I have a deep bench of relationships? Do I have marriage mentors, people who will teach us how to hold it together when things get tough. I would rather you have marriage mentors and need to work on your six pack. Yeah. Than have a six pack or eight pack. Come on somebody. And, and, and internally You've never been to therapy and th- don't have never a been to therapy Ain't got no mentors Ain't got nobody to coach you. You think you, you it all that in a bag of chips. Here's nothing. thing. Watch this. If we're not careful, we will set relationships up to fail big time because if if you're constantly online looking for validation from a thousand people that or 10,000 or 100,000 people that follow you, no matter what I say to you, it can't compete with that. No. Cuz I'm 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 wanting I'm wanting all the smoke in my DMs, I'm wanting all the smoke in so at some point we have to learn what is rich in real life, not just what I'm seeing online and what's in my DMs and my comments, because likes and comments don't equal sales. And it'll never Woo! be enough. And I and used I used to say this all the time because you you go after somebody in a relationship for what you think that you two combined can bring the world. Yeah. Because they're just this is your equal. This is oh I found somebody on my level. And right. what's eventually going to happen is because you both are seeking validation externally. Let me be clear: we all got an ego and we all do it a little bit. Right. But because you're seeking validation externally. What I have to give you eventually will never be enough. And two, eventually I'll become your biggest hater. That part right there. Because when I get to know you and now I got some questions and now I'm holding you to a higher standard and now I have expectations. That's right. Because there should be some expectations in a relationship. Well, the people on the internet that love me don't have these expectations. Exactly. The people on the internet love everything Everything I do. do. So you're the problem. Exactly. You don't like me for me. You don't like all the attention (laughs) I get. You don't like who I am. See, and you, you are articulating the game. Yes. You're articulating the game. Yes. So, 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 so what we've, what we've been picking people off the gram right now. You're about to become your biggest hater. (laughs) Watch this. Watch it. So, 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 and, 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 so we have to learn. So a couple things I want to back up because Jess, we're covering so much powerful stuff here. I've had three different things and lost them already because you keep going. (laughs) Because this is so good. So, so first thing we got to love ourselves. Yep. We have to. So if you're, if you're currently single right now and you're in between relationships, 
do yourself a favor. Interview three quality mental health professionals. Find mm. one in your city. Find, and that's why I want you to go to healingwithintegrity.com. Just go to healingwithintegrity.com because one of the videos that I did is teaching you how to find a quality therapist. I actually give you the steps. Oh, that's good. On how, and I give oh, you that's two, good. two awesome websites that will show you how to, you just type in your zip code and it'll pull up mental health professionals from psychology today based in your area. I want to put a pin in that for a second because you know how many people that I have spoken to, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me to get a therapist and I tried one and they didn't know anything or it wasn't great. Or it was like, I was just talking to a brick wall. Like the first therapy experience people have is so meaningful. Yeah. You've got to find the right. You got to find a good, yes. you have to interview them and find a good one. And yes. listen, and don't watch this. Don't, don't make a singular incidence, global phenomenon. I'm gonna say that again, slower. Be careful not to make a singular incidence global phenomenon. Dr. Del Toro, what do you mean by that? If you take a one-time experience and you broad brush stroke everything else that happens after that and saying that's just the way it is with everyone, you've taken a singular incidence and you've made it global phenomenon. So if you say, oh my God, I had one bad podcast host interviewer, yeah. so I'm not doing podcasts anymore. Or I, or I dated this chick and she was like this, so I'm not going to date that kind of woman anymore ever again. Or, right, the the more we, or I I went to therapy one time and the person was, maybe they were having a bad day. Maybe maybe they, maybe they, yeah. maybe they're caregiving for an elderly parent and they're just exhausted. They're burnt out, but they need the money so they can't take time off. This is what we do when we're hurt, though. We do extremes. Yeah, we do extremes. And we just, and we broad brush stroke and we say, okay, because watch, you didn't want to go to therapy to begin with. Right. So you're, you were looking for, for a, a way out. For a reason to get out. Correct. When you went and you will always find, oh, shucks. Jess, y'all, you got to understand this. You will always find what you're looking for. Always. You will. If you are trying to find what's wrong with this person, you will make up. The brain is such a masterful machine. Literally. You will make up stuff. Yes. Just to prove there's a psychological phenomenon that I love to teach on, sis. And it's called confirmation bias. Mm -hmm. And most mm -hmm. people don't understand what confirmation bias is. But confirmation bias is an incredibly powerful tool. Yep. If used correctly. Yep. Confirmation bias says this. As soon as I have a strongly held belief or a bias towards something or someone, the brain goes about the job of collecting evidence to prove that my bias is correct. It confirms my bias. It looks for evidence to say you're right. Yeah. At the same time as it looks for evidence to validate me being right, it intentionally hides from me any proof of the contrary. So here's how confirmation is working. Confirmation bias is working against you in love and romantic relationships. You go through a bad relationship. You don't heal correctly after the relationship. And so now you say all men are this way. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you say all men are this way because this person treated you that way or all military men are that way or all women that come from pastors or, or, or PK kids, or, kids yep. I don't care what it is or all guys that go to the gym are this way or all girls that 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 came from this college are this way or women who have come from a sorority are this way. Every time you lump humanity into one thing because of one experience you've had, your brain's going to start finding more proof to say, you know what, you're right. Yes, all men are dogs. So what confirmation bias is going to do is show you all the dogs and it's going to hide from you all the healed gentlemen because you said that all men are dogs. So all confirmation bias, your brain is, is on a job 24-7 to prove you right. But the problem, sis, is because you're right. Because job is to protect you. Exactly. Exactly. So, so you're right, but you ain't happy. You're miserable because of confirmation bias. So we have to be careful what we believe. <laughs> Which is why we this have affirmations. We and this is why the majority of us who are hollering that you're broke are you're broke. That's, you're, that part. You're broke. You're that right. part. You're absolutely broke. You're broke in real life. You, you, <laughs> you have to be careful what you have told yourself is a belief. Because whatever you hold on to as a belief, your brain's going to show you more Absolutely. proof of that belief. And yep. it's going to hide from you all the amazing people that are out there. There's tons of amazing people in your backyard that can't wait to meet you. But the reason why you haven't met them yet is because somewhere internally, there's a possibility that you might have a strongly held belief that says that the thing that you want doesn't exist. So your brain's like, nope, it doesn't. A healed quality woman, a healed quality man with a great frame and book smarts and business savvy and loves God. Oh, that doesn't exist. 
sure. Brain says, since that doesn't exist, since that's what you believe, I'm going to prove to you it doesn't exist. Right. So do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? <laughs> do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Oh. And if we want to be rich in real life, we got to make the decision to be happy with ourselves right now. And here's one of the things I want to encourage you to do, and this is going to help you heal with integrity as well. Love who you are right now. Right. Because one of the things that Deepak Chopra taught me is he says, the past is a thief, but so is the future. Mm. So all we got is the present. Hurt my feelings, sis. Right. Because we were always talking. I got plans. Yeah, I got plans. I got goals. I got all this stuff I want to do in the future. But guess what Deepak taught me? He said, every time we focus on the future so much. We lose what we've got right now. We rob the present of our current happiness. And we postpone happiness to a future event. Mm. A future state. A future date. I just shared this on Instagram. It's a Dr. Seuss quote. The quote says this. Right now you are you. Yeah. And that is truer than true. Right. And there's nobody alive that's youer than you. Mm. <laughs> Didn't he sound just like him? Isn't that powerful? <laughs> right, right. So, 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 so right now I am me. So love the me that you are right now. Not the you six months from now and not the you six years ago. Who are you today? And how can you fall madly in love with who you are today and say, I am this amazing man. I am this amazing woman. And I desire to share my life with someone who also is amazing. See, here's what we we have to stop rescuing people, Jess. I got to get a pen. We got to (laughs) stop rescuing people and we and we have to stop taking on people as projects. Right. We have to stop fixing people. If you got to be your partner's therapist, this is the wrong relationship. Carriers. That partner, because we're carrying. Mm -hmm. We're carrying everybody on our back. I got it. Uh, You wonder why you exalted. I can do it better, faster. I make good choices. We We both do it together. We won't get hurt. I got this. I got this. Yeah. Come with me. Come with me. I got it. I got it. And I'm worn out. Yeah. That's right. So, so you. you, And resentful. That part. (laughs) So we have to pick partners, Mm -hmm. not just companions, because you can go Mm -hmm. on a cruise with anybody. You can go to the movies with anybody. You can you can be intimate with anybody. It's not about that. It's got to be about. Watch this. And and it's it's got to be about. Is the, are we aligned in where we're going? Right. Right. I, I personally think that movies are the worst first date ever because you don't do enough talking. Right. See, right. I believe, right. It's like, let's sit down and talk about it. You've our, proved your ability to sit next to me quietly. <laughs> you have you you have the qualifications of a seven year old. Thank you. <laughs> Third grade. Great job. <laughs> Thank Fifth you. grade. Great job. I'm proud of you. Right. Are you kidding me? Right. But it's not a good first date. You want to talk. Right. Because people will hang themselves with their words. Oh, my, th- the, listen, <laughs> hold on. My therapist, my coach, when, when I was um, single again and I was like, I don't even know how to be single. It's been so long. Yeah. And she was like, well, I can tell you all the things, but you ready? The best piece of advice I can give you is, um, is a high achieving woman who is destined and desperate to prove who she is. Mm. I just want you to go on a date and shut up. Mm. And I was like, okay. And she said, because a man's going to tell you everything you need to know in the first date, if you just sip it. Wow. And I just started shutting up and boy, did I see some stuff. 30, 40 minutes. I'm like, yep, we good. That's that's it. That's it. I'm out. (laughs) Because you told me everything Everything I need to know. Right there. Okay. (laughs) But we walk in because high achievers, carriers, all the things. Let me walk in, sit down and prove to you why I am the best. Yes. And why I can, I can turn your life upside down. I can fix you. I can heal you. I can, I can, I can. I'll put you right in this backpack. Yeah, I got you. Boom. (laughs) And I, I I went through that. I I was a captain save a I was Captain Sabo. You better say it. For years. <laughs> I went through a decade of being Captain Sabo. What did that look like? Were you like, I got this? It meant this. picking projects. You're not it where meant, you want to be. Right. It, it meant, watch this. And here's what. And I'll just But hold be, on. So should we date someone that is where, exactly where we expect them to be? Or does everybody have a little space and room for growth? Everybody, everybody has space and room to grow. None so of us are So what's the perfect. difference between the need for growth and a project? See, here's, it comes down to alignment. So mm-hmm. for me, I was drawn to people who had a lot of drama going on in their lives because mm. i was like because first of all, and men we have to be careful about this because men innately are fixers. fixers yeah so so you will gravitate to the person who's got the drama going on because guess what we get to be the hero because we need to be needed mm. fellas listen to me i was about to ask your, you for this advice for your, men you better fellas, tell them your 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 internal masculine need to be needed can be preyed on by a woman who's manipulating you. 
because she knows you have a need to be needed. So you have to be careful how you, you literally have to almost ration out. Because especially if you're an empath and you're a giver mm -hmm. and you have a big heart, oh my gosh. You can have it all. You're, 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 you're going to be prey to people who are manipulators mm -hmm. and people who are toxic and people who know they got a lot of baggage, mm -hmm. right? So you have to clear all that. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I had to do. So I, when you're in a pattern, a lot of times you don't realize you're in the pattern until something cataclysmic happens. Not never. Right, right. You, you don't know. You, you don't know no. until someone says, ding, ding, not, not. You're in a pattern. You know you've done this in the last three relationships, right? Right. So I had to go through that. And then I, when, when, I, when, I, 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 when I tell you I went through a really, really rough patch in a relationship, got out of that relationship, I said, God, if you get me out of this crazy, toxic situation, I will never go back again. And I promise you, I will fix everything that's wrong with me so that I can have the woman that I know you have for me. And I sat down. I sat my butt down. And I didn't date for two years. Mm. And all I did was go to therapy every week and I dealt with every issue that I thought I could potentially have. Right. I dealt with it. I dealt with I dealt with dad me. wounds. I dealt with imposter syndrome. I dealt with needing to be needed. I dealt with um um uh codependency. Mm. I dealt with um my mom's passing and how that grief, grief. of my mom's passing also had me making poor choices in dating. If y'all didn't because know what Tyler Perry not, said about grief, because when I tell you, <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't understand right. that toll that grieving the loss of a loved one right. has on our lives. Right. We don't. So, and we don't understand. And we don't understand. Uh, my friend, do yourself the. It amazes me, Jess. If we get in a car accident, even if. You were not harmed in the car accident. What's the first thing that the ambulance and the police make you do anyway? Go to the hospital. You have to go to the hospital. Right. There is there. You don't get a chance to go straight home. Right. You have to go to the hospital and get checked out by a professional. Correct. To make sure that there's no internal bleeding, no internal hemorrhaging, no internal damage that we can't physically see externally. Right. But we go through emotional train wrecks. And don't see nobody. And don't see no professional. Think, think we got it. I got this. Oh, I'm good. I, and we just walk I'm away just from it like, like I'm fine. I'm all of it. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm, yeah. I'm good. Moving on. Yeah, yeah. No, if you're if you're a ghoster, you're not good. Ooh. I'm going to say that again. If you're a ghoster, you're not good. Because emotionally mature people don't need to ghost. Emotionally mature people know how to have critical conversations that close relationships. My friend, you have to get better at how you exit. Everybody wants to talk about how to get into a relationship, but we don't talk about how to correctly exit when mm. it's not aligned. So instead of having the conversation, we run, we ghost, yeah. we block, right? We 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 just you know what I'm saying. And now 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 listen, I'm not talking about if someone's abusing you or if your life is being right, threatened right, or someone's right. you know alcoholism or so, something something. You're, if you're physical, no no no, get yeah. the heck out of there. You ain't you ain't got to explain that to nobody. But if but if you're just poor at conflict resolution and if you just don't want to deal with it so we just block people yeah there is there's some things here that got to get fixed and until you sit down and really unpack it and really deal with you you cannot be the best version of yourself for someone else i am the best version of myself i've ever been right now and i've done the work and i'm constantly still doing the work because and that's why I call it healing with integrity. The ing yeah. is crucial. Yeah. Because it's the past present. It's the it's the past participle forming suffix that goes at the end of the word heal, yep. which means it's an ever evolving lifelong journey. We're always healing. We're always growing. We're always developing. It's never done. It's never done. It, what makes it done is when you get that new amazing relationship. But even in that new amazing relationship, you're still gonna have to get some work done. Because a relation and see and guess who guess I wanna, what I'm gonna get please, into this battlefield. Hold please, on. First, I want to point this out that this is the list of things we were gonna talk about, <laughs> and we've hit on one of them. That's how good this episode is. Um, and we will be here for two and a half hours. So I wanna I wanna end in this place with you because I'm like, 
we talked about this. You, we, we glazed over it in this episode, but we talked about it before this episode. Let's do it. Is that if you are currently in the battlefield, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about getting under someone to get over them, that part. but you are currently in the battlefield yeah. because you have done a lot of the work, but yeah. you are finally like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to step out there. I'm yeah. going to date. I'm going to try some things. Yeah. You're in the best place. Yes. Absolutely. Because you're see, in the best place. That part. And I bet you feel what I felt, which was when I went, I was like, okay, I'm going to go out there. And right. I went out there and it was like, bang, 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 right, bang. Right. And I was like, okay, no. I'm going back home. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not done. I'm not healed. Right. I'm not ready. <laughs> because as, as soon as you think you're healed from something, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get a test. Right. Because that's what life does. Yes. Life tests you to see if you're ready to go to the next grade. And if you're not ready to go to the next grade, you keep taking the test. And the teacher is silent when you're taking the test. So stop getting mad at God because he's not giving you direction. He gave you direction three years ago. But you're not listening. The teacher is silent when you're taking the test. So stop asking for more insight and wisdom when he already gave it to you. All you have to do is walk out what it is that he's put on the inside of you. But understand that whenever you say, okay, I'm, I've fixed this. I'm no longer drawn to a narcissist. Guess what? The first thing you're going to get hit with a narcissist. Correct. That's in a nice package. In a different body. In a different body. Yep. To see if you can now trust all that work that you did, your discernment, your, 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 your gut instinct, your intuition, trusting yourself, all these cool things, these phrases that we use. Now that gets put to the test. All you got to do is stay congruent with who you are. And when I tell you, see, the light does the work, sis. Yes. I've learned that, Jess. Yes. Just like how in business, your price should repel the wrong clients. I can't stop pissing people off. And attract the right ones. Come on, somebody, <laughs> I can't right? Stop. <laughs> yeah. The same thing is true in relationship. Your light, when you really do the work and yeah. God's light shines through your life, that light will repel dark energy. Right. And it will attract beautiful energy. Absolutely. Oh my God. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, do you know how many people ask me to be on their show on their podcast and I turn them down because really? I value my time but when we connected I was like boom that's that's fire oh we're gonna have us a conversation oh heck yeah <laughs> and so and, and, and then boom two a week and a half later we're we're filming we talked for hours exactly yeah. but but that's what I'm saying the light does the work yep so I want to encourage everyone who's on your healing journey and you're doing the work yes Keep doing the work because I promise you the knuckleheads, the people that have hurt you, that have disappointed you, the gold diggers, all the stuff that you've gone through were the frogs you had to kiss on the way to your prince or princess. So keep doing the work. but And don't be discouraged when you go out there and you still experience some landmines. That's just life and business's way to test you to see have you really learned the lesson. And the truth is you really should have learned the lesson because at the end of the day, again, you can get sex from anybody. You can get a trip from anybody. You can get, you know, dates from anybody. It's not about who you're doing it with. It's about alignment. And remember this, and this is huge, sis. Relationships, and Tony Robbins taught me this. A relationship is a place you go to give, mm. not a place you go to get. Mm -hmm. Naked and unashamed. And and, and give I think, unconditionally. You, do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So 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 here's 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 my challenge. Get yourself to a place in your own life where you're at surplus. Yes. You can give an overflow. I'm in surplus. Yes. I'm, I'm in such a great place you, in my in life. So I can give an what? overflow. And so, and that's, and that's what creates a healthy relationship. Because if, if, if two people come to a relationship in overflow, in overflow, the relationship is also what in overflow. Mm -hmm. So now there's so much there. We can eat, we can dine. We can, we, we have a feast Yes, because there's abundance. One of, but the if, big but if in, one of the biggest halting places I realized I was not ready when I went out there on that battlefield mm -hmm. was that I found myself ready to receive, but I could not give. Mm. I kept, I was like, where is it? I don't yeah, have it. Like, I don't I have don't it wanna, to give. I was like getting annoyed trying to give back to someone what they were giving me. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh, honey, you're not ready. There's something stuck there. Your yeah. giving ability is stuck. Right. So you that means you're not full. And, that, and what that also means is that probably who came before that person, mm -hmm. You gave to them to the Too extreme. Much. Too much. Overgive. You overgave. You overextended yourself. And we do that all the time. Hit the button like this. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, so we, 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 again, we have to learn that alignment is more important than anything. Yeah. And we have to align with people that have our best goals and dreams and aspirations at heart. Mm. We got to go on that journey. We got to heal with integrity. Oh, this and is so good. 
good. <laughs> and fellas, let me say this to you, fellas. Listen, value your. I know we live in a world that beats us up, says we're not healed, says we're constantly out there just thugging around, hoeing around. But listen, fellas, I believe that you're intelligent, you're brilliant, you're mm -hmm. powerful, mm -hmm. you're gifted, yes. you're anointed. Yes. You have worth and value in and of itself. Love yourself more. Mm value yourself more i asked jessica if i could show you guys this picture yes. this is something I'm, I've, I've been a single dad for a, a decent part of the time that i've been i've been um a father and this is a proud image for me because my daughters can go to college and say that they've been on the cover of a major magazine with their father because i know that i'm my daughter's first boyfriend so i take my role as a father very seriously and I just want to encourage every man that's out there that's watching this. Go on your healing journey. Therapy isn't just for women. Mm -mm. Yoga isn't just for women. Mm -mm. Meditation isn't just for women. Watch this. Trips with other positive, brilliant, anointed men is not just for women. Mm. Retreats in Costa Rica is not just for women. Fellas, it's not, oh, if I do that, I'm, I'm, I'm gay or I'm female or I'm feminine. I'm not, not, every gender has both masculine and feminine in it. Absolutely. So I want you to. And the goal is balance. Yeah, and the goal is balance. Yep. So fall in love with being a man of integrity. Fall in love with being a man that takes care of his children. And fall in love with being a man that works every day to be the best reflection of God that you can be. And as you do that and you go on your healing journey, you will meet other amazing people who are also on their healing journey. And when two healed people who have done their work come together, baby, now we got rich <laughs> in real life. <laughs> can I get I can't, some? I can't wait to I can't wait till I find that relationship. And I'm gonna be like, y'all remember what Dr. D said? Yes. I am rich in real life. Yes. Now. Yes. And you feel it, sis. You feel that. This was so good. This was so good. Okay, I gotta wrap with this. I gotta wrap with this. I mean, you've said it a million times. But after this experience, after working through your own healing, healing with integrity, utilizing speed, yes. understanding what you needed, finding those experiences. What do you feel like rich in real life is to you? To me, rich in real life is having the ability to know that you're the best version of yourself mm -hmm. right now. Having a deep bench of relationships. Mm. Man, when I tell you my phone is, is so stacked with amazing people in it. Mm -hmm. I don't have a single negative person in my life that I intentionally interact with. Mm -hmm. Not a single one. I get up, I get to watch the sunset from the back of my beautiful home every day. Mm. I get a chance to go to the beach. I get a chance to spend quality time with my daughters. Ooh. I get a chance to go on field trips and vacations and take my daughters on college tours. And I love doing that stuff. I love, I have amazing friends. That's what rich in real life is. Mm. I drive a great car. That's yeah. what rich in real life is. I don't feel the car payment. That's no. what rich in yes. real life is. Come on, somebody. When my daughters need stuff, I can pay for it for them. Right. That's what rich in real life is. But it's also going to a food truck and, 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 and getting a two dollar taco. And Come having on, somebody. A time. And having the time of your life. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not all about the MX Platinum card. It's, it's great to have all that stuff. Yeah. But guess what? Rich in real life is loving the life that you're living right now and living it to the fullest. The one you have mm -hmm. right now. People say you can be here today and gone tomorrow. That's a lie. You can be here today and gone today. Mm. So the time to live your dreams and live your rich life is right now. It's right now, friend. Woo! <laughs> Sir, this was incredible. <laughs> this was so good. Thank you so much. Tell folks where they can learn more about you, where they can follow you, where they can stalk you, because yeah. they will be after this. <laughs> Let them know and where they can slide in your DMs and say ready because some woman saw this and was like, is he single? So right there, tell them yes. where they can learn learn more about you. Absolutely. So we're at Dr. Della Toro on all social, on TikTok, on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, our YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash Della Toro. Uh, Della Toro.com is our primary website. If you're a speaker, author, coach, influencer, and you're looking at 
cultivate your presentation skills, check us out at crushthestage.com. If you've enjoyed this episode and this content in this episode, please do me a favor. Take a part of our free online course. It's called Healing with Integrity. Just go to healingwithintegrity.com. Put your name, email address, and phone number in there, and you will have instant access. Literally, while you're watching this episode, you could literally go to healingwithintegrity.com, and you can get our free online course. It's absolutely free, and it's my way of just paying it forward, being rich in real life. Yep. That's part of being rich in real life is philanthropy. Yep. Absolutely. Being able to just give. I could, charge, I give? For, I could charge for it all yep. day long, exactly. but it's a free course designed to help you heal with integrity my friend Boom. so that's how you get a hold of us and uh, i'm just grateful for this honor and this opportunity jess this is amazing what you created and thank you for the opportunity to partner with you thank you thank you thank you Yay!